If you're new here, a big hello, my name is Louise. So today I've got a really exciting video for you guys. Today is my one year anniversary here in Canada. So we flew on the 26th of December 2019 and it is now the 26th of December 2020. And what a year it has been. I like filming these update videos just so you know where we're at for people that are going through the process to see what is possible throughout the year. I did do a six month update video. So if you haven't watched that yet, I would make sure you go check that out before this so you can see what we were up to from landing to six months. Now this is gonna be a whole summary of the whole year, where we're at now, um, jobs that we've got, what we recommend for other people, and then at the end of the video, then I am gonna be doing a q and A. I did ask over on my Instagram for some questions about Canada, or anybody going through this visa if they had any questions. So I will do a Q&A at the very end of this video. So like I said before, we landed on the 26th of December 2019, exactly a year ago today. And oh my goodness, what a year it has been. Um, I'm gonna try and keep you up to date as much as I can remember, but oh my God, this whole year has gone super fast. If you'd have asked me when we landed what we would have got up to, it would probably been very, very different to what we had planned because of what happened in the world. We did spend a lot of the year just working and saving money because that's all really we could do. Obviously you guys know that we've been through coronavirus, it's still happening now. We're currently in lockdown here in Ontario, so we can't go out and see as much places as we would like to. If anything, this, this year has gave us the chance to save as much as we can, ready for the future, ready to go explore and etc. So when we landed in Canada, our number one thing was to find an apartment and also to find a job. Now when we landed, we had an Airbnb for one month, but we knew we had to eventually get in an apartment or a house, which leads us onto our apartment that we did get. We were very, very fortunate. We found an apartment, I would say, within the first week of getting here, and we moved in three weeks into getting to Canada. Our apartment was just a one bed apartment. It was really, really nice. If you guys haven't watched it, then we have a whole empty apartment tour. I will link it down below if you guys want to see it of what a Canadian apartment looks like. It costs 1,200 Canadian dollars a month. Um, and that was bills included. So it was a really, really good price. I also have a cost of living video as well if you wanted to see how much it costs to live in an apartment. We absolutely loved this apartment, but we did outgrow it quite fast. There was a number of things that were negative for us in the apartment that we soon to realize while living in it. One of them is being on the very top floor. Now this was something that some people would like, but over time this is something that we really struggled with when you're doing your groceries, when you're moving furniture in. Just because it was just me and Jake, if we bought a sofa for example or a bed, it was carrying it from the bottom to the top and when you don't know anyone to help you, it did get quite um, tiring. Obviously we just came with five suitcases, so we needed to buy everything and moving things in were extremely difficult. If we were home in England, we could call on friends to help us, but just because it was me and him, it was extremely hard living on the top floor. Doing our weekly shop as well, we ended up buying a cart um, because it was super hard work to carry the bags up to the top floor. So I recommend this. If you are someone that's moved into an apartment building and you're in quite a high level, then I recommend you buying one of these carts. I'll insert a picture. These were literally a lifesaver. Even moving out of the apartment, we put everything in it. They were literally like $20 from Walmart and this is one of our top tips if you're living in an apartment is please buy one of these. It will save you so much time. It, this is something that definitely got its money's worth. We used it every single day. Um, another thing about the apartment is obviously we did have a back garden, a backyard as they say here, which is something in the summer we really, really miss because as much as our neighbor was super, super friendly, as soon as our sliding doors went for the balcony, 
they came out straight away which wasn't a negative it was nice to actually talk to someone other than Jake because we didn't know anyone in the area but at the same time we didn't feel like we had any privacy so I absolutely love sunbathing in the summer here it was super hot I just wanted to go out listen to music and chill but as soon as I set my foot on the balcony my neighbor was out ready to talk to me because there was nothing to divide us either side so I guess that is a positive and a negative because you've got to speak to someone new and make friends but also we didn't feel like we had our um privacy and able to have us time so yeah that was definitely another negative to living in an apartment very very quickly we realized that we wasn't going to be in that apartment for long we did sign a one-year contract in the apartment which is something i'm going to get onto a little bit later into this video so we started looking for houses we were house viewing i would say pretty early on i would say within the first six months of living here we were already house viewing and just because we knew we didn't want to be in an apartment anymore apartment wasn't really for us i know some people love apartments but we just definitely want to be in our own house and not have people live above or below us and just have our own privacy have our own driveway like jake hated parking a few minutes away and then walk into our apartment so when looking for a house we obviously were looking at more than one bedroom we were looking for a driveway we were looking for a private backyard and then the house that we are currently in fell into our arms so we found this in august time around my birthday and we moved in on the 1st of september so that's within seven months of being in the country so we are very fortunate for finding this place and this place is honestly I'm so happy and I feel so lucky that we found it. So this is a four bedroom house. I will link the empty house tour down in the description if you want to go view it. And I haven't done a cost of living video just yet because I'm waiting for all the bills to come in to do it. Some of our bills work quarterly. So one of them we haven't received yet and I just wanna make sure I get all the money correct. So that's why I haven't done that yet. But this is a four bedroom house. It fits three cars on the driveway. It's got a huge backyard a huge kitchen it came with like fridge freezer it came with a washing machine and a dishwasher a cooker and all the rooms were empty so we just had to find our own furniture but honestly this house is so us we found it and it's 1600 canadian dollars so it's actually not that much more than a one bed apartment for what you're getting and we were very very lucky to find it we absolutely love it here and we see ourselves living here for as long as we can and until we save enough for a house. So yeah, that is where we are on the house update. So we moved from a Airbnb into a one bedroom apartment. Then we moved from the one bed apartment into a four bedroom house all in the space of one year. Now my only top tip on moving into a place here in Canada when you get here is please read your contract. This is something that we lost a lot of money on. So we signed a one year lease with our apartment and we want to move out of there before the lease was up for a number of reasons. Our contract ended on New Year's Eve and we didn't want to move out on New Year's Eve. We knew around Christmas time it would be extremely stressful to even get movers and also the weather we knew it was going to be snowing and we are so glad and so fortunate that we moved into the, this house when we did because the snow is already coming down thick and moving through that weather is definitely something that we wouldn't recommend so we lost out a lot of money because we had to end our contract three months early we signed a one-year lease in our apartment and we ended it in September and we still had to owe them for the three months up front. So we wasted nearly 4,000 Canadian dollars ending our lease early, which literally kills me to say that. And it's one of the biggest mistakes we've had since we've got here. But please, this is something that I've learned and I definitely will always read the contract for future. And people will say to us, why don't you just stick it out and then move into a house afterwards? But the thing is, this house was available on September the 1st. If we didn't move into it then, we would have lost it. And there's honestly no other houses for this price in the market. 
and we searched and searched and searched and this just fell into our arms. Now moving on to jobs. So when we landed in Canada, we knew that we would have to get jobs near enough straight away because me and Jake didn't come with a lot of money. We actually came to Canada on the bare minimum that you needed, which was 2000 500 Canadian dollars each and once we put our deposit down on our house um, our apartment sorry then all of our money near enough went so we had to find jobs straight away I had a job interview within the first week I literally just applied for every single job online and I got a phone call within the first few days and I had a job interview and I got a job within the first week of moving to Canada and Jake also had a job interview in the first week as well he actually had two job interviews in the first week for me I only had the one job interview and it was for a office based job so it was a Monday to Friday 9 till 5 30 weekends off and in my head that was the perfect job. That was the job that I wanted to come to Canada to do. If you guys don't know me and don't follow me, I was a dancer before. So I used to work six days a week, like till 11 p.m. at night, back in in the morning. I was honestly go, go, go. And I absolutely loved my job, so I'm not complaining. But when I moved here, I did definitely want to focus more on like family and me and Jake being able to go and see the country and I know not having a entertainer job was probably the best thing to do and having a Monday to Friday job was the best thing for us so on weekends we could go and travel and see and that's why we moved to Canada and in my head I was so so happy that I got a Monday to Friday 9 till 5 to job in an office sat down but I was very very quick to realize that that industry was not for me i met some amazing people at this job like they were so so friendly and i'm so fortunate for everything that they've done for me but it's definitely not a job for me and this is the first time ever in my life that i ever experienced i didn't really know the right word for it like anxiety so I've been very fortunate. I don't really like struggle with anxiety or depression or anything like that. But this job literally gave me anxiety. So I would wake up in the morning and I didn't want to get out of bed. I would cry and cry and cry. And I, this story I've never told anyone apart from Jake because he was there through it all. And I just don't know what it is. Sorry. Oh, I didn't think I'd get upset. Like I have never been a person that would like not want to go to work. Like no matter what job I have, I would go to work. So like even in between contracts, I would work in the supermarket with my mum just so it makes some money. And also because I get bored so easily, I just have to work. So even if I don't enjoy a job, I will always turn up to a job and I will always do it to make the money. But this is the first time ever that I've ever felt like this. I just felt so sad. So I'd wake up, I would just cry, not want to go to work, but I knew I had to because obviously we were, this was the only way to make money and we would run out of money eventually. So I always went to work, I would come home, I would cry and I, I always thought I was like getting Jake down. I tried not to cry in front of him and I just really, really wasn't happy in this job. I think it was because one, I was bored, like sitting down at a computer just isn't for me. Two, the job was extremely, extremely emotional itself. I had to call people, I got called a number of names um, and I was being told rude things all the time and I think that eventually went on my mental health and I just wasn't happy but I just knew I had to stick it out and I remember Jake said to me one day, he was like, I just want you to be happy. Like, we've come to this country. You're so happy when you're not working. But as soon as it comes around to Monday again, we do the whole thing on repeat of me getting upset, me not wanting to go to work. He just said that he would rather me leave this job and a struggle than see me upset. So I stuck this job out for three months and then coronavirus hit. And I was about to hand in my notice. I never want to disappoint anyone. So I really, really was struggling to hand in my notice without having another job to fall on. I was just applying for every retail job under the sun. Like we have lots of shopping miles. I was just applying for 
every single retail job because I knew I liked retail. And then March hit and that's when coronavirus hit. So they called us all in. They said that we no longer have a job with the company. We all had to go on furlough which means we no longer had a job. But then the Ontario went into like sort of a red zone lockdown. It was nowhere near as bad as the UK. So I never physically had to hand in my notice and I just left and I never went back after then. So during uh, the four weeks of lockdown, I vlogged every single day. It was just me and Jake at home and I was applying for every job. Then suddenly a job came up. I have got an interview. I was so, so happy that day and I got offered a job in retail, which I'm happy to say was the best thing for me. It was in a huge, huge team. It was to do with, the job is like an online department in a supermarket. So it was absolutely striving at this point because everyone was ordering online because of COVID, no one wanted to go into the stores. So I was super busy. I'm doing like 20,000 steps, 20,000 to 30,000 steps a day. It was a huge team because we had to cater for all these people for online orders. So, and they were all people like my age as well. So I met some amazing, amazing friends and I just had like the best time. And this is when like it changed for me. I was enjoying job, my job. I was enjoying the lifestyle at home. I'm, I was just so, so happy. And then I think it was around August time, a position came up at work for the manager of the department, like the online department. And I said to Jake at home, I think I'm gonna apply for it. And he told me that I should, like I was a manager back in the UK. I, when I came here, I always said I didn't wanna go into a manager job. I didn't want the stress. I just wanted to go and work, go home and chill. And I just felt like I just see myself in this position. I got along with everyone in the team and I just thought, you know, what's the worst that could happen? I could not get the job. So I applied for the manager job and I think it was two weeks later, I got called in to say I got it. So I got promoted uh, within four months of being with that company. I am still in this job. I absolutely love it. People ask me all the time on Instagram and YouTube, what is my job? I don't wanna tell you exactly what the company is that I work for just cause I do like a bit of privacy, but I do work for a supermarket on the online department and I absolutely love it. I would not change it for the world. I work for some amazing managers. My team is incredible. There's like 35 of them and I've made some amazing friends there. I work five days a week and it's like the same schedule. So I work one weekend, I'm off another weekend, which means me and Jake can plan and we've been able to go on adventures. And I just love every single minute about my job. I was so glad that I had that first job in the office because it made me realize what I actually don't want. Being back in England, I see myself working in an office nine to five here in Canada and enjoying the weekends. And that's exactly what I didn't want. And I needed to be able to do it to see that. And I'm so glad and so fortunate that I went through that and I came out the other side a lot better and I'm in an amazing job. Okay, so we've talked about the house job. Uh, I'll talk about some amazing things that we've done since like some of my favorite moments while we've been here, here in Canada. Now, one of the positives of living in the top floor apartment was on Canada Day, um, which was July 1st, we stood on our balcony and watched the whole of St. Catharines light up in fireworks. That is one of the most amazing, amazing memories since I've been here. I just remember it, it was absolutely amazing. That's one thing I'll probably miss about the apartment. Probably the only thing I'll miss about the apartment is obviously those fireworks on the balcony. That was so nice. Another thing I, I truly love about here in Ontario is the waterfalls. Obviously we have Niagara Falls, but I also love Bulls Falls, Deku Falls, like all of the waterfalls are so beautiful and in the summer it was just amazing going around to find them all. Another positive of Canada is you get to see all the seasons. Like autumn was absolutely beautiful with all the colour of the leaves. Summer was so humid, it was so hot. Like there were some days where I just wanted to stand in my bikini in the backyard because it felt hotter than Cyprus. It was 
so hot and then obviously we've got winter at the minute it's snowing we do have five to ten centimeters to snow overnight we woke up to have our very first white christmas together that was a magical and i'll never forget that that was incredible oh, we've just had some amazing memories together already and it's only been a year and we've been in lockdown for half of it so i can't wait to see what else is to come with us so within the next year this time next year we're either going to be going back to the uk or we're gonna have our PR to stay, which is really scary and exciting at the same time. I'm now just gonna go into the Q and A's. I've got lots of questions. I'm just gonna start at the top. I actually haven't read any of these yet, so I might have already answered some of the questions, but how do you find being away from family and the fear of missing out? Okay, so my family uh, live in Western Supermare in the UK and Jake's live in Birmingham. And I've always traveled like most of my life with dancing. I've never really been at home since the age of 18. So I think it's slightly easier for me. Obviously I miss my family, I miss them so much. But if I was in the UK now, I probably wouldn't be seeing them anyway because of COVID, England are in lockdown. I do miss them, I miss obviously them going meeting up for birthdays and Christmases, but I've always missed them anyway. So it doesn't feel much different and I can't wait for them to come over here. I think that's what drives me knowing that they're going to be coming over here to see how amazing this place is that's what drives me and gets me excited i can't wait to see them another question how many times did you visit canada before the big move we had never mis visited canada before nor me or jake we'd never been to canada we kind of thought it was going to be like america and boy we were wrong it's more like the uk than america i would say but yeah we never visited canada it was completely out of the blue and we just knew if we didn't like it we could always come home and we absolutely love it everyone would love it here trust me will you study to stay in canada for pr so we're not going through the study route i've talked about this in another q a before um, I did want to do midwifery, but with COVID at the minute, they're not taking any applicants. So we're going down the express entry route, which means you have to be a manager or a supervisor in a, somewhere for at least one year, and then you could apply to go express entry. And that's what we are doing. Both me and Jake have got manager jobs, which means April 2021, we'll be able to apply for our PR because we would have been working for a year under a management role here in Canada. What is your number one advice for a new immigrant who will come to Canada next year? My number one advice for someone who hasn't left to come yet but they're, they are due to come in the next year is save. Our money ran out so quick because you have to put down such a big deposit when you move into accommodation. So I would just save, save, save. What's the worst and best thing about living in Canada compared to the UK. So the best thing is the seasons. I absolutely love the seasons. I absolutely love that we had a summer this year and I absolutely love that we woke up to have a white Christmas. Like nothing can change that. The seasons is amazing. I do not miss the rain in the UK one bit. A lot of people in my work ask me what the weather's like in the UK and I'm like, it just rains. <laughs> all day every day it rains and then once a year we'll have like a really really hot day and everyone comes out in their vests and shorts but apart from that it rains and the worst thing is probably not having my friends and family here but also the food i always thought i would love the food more here but honestly i miss english food so much there's just loads of different things that i miss about it did you take your dollars over in cash when you arrived or in your bank account so we took over some in cash and some in card i think it was mainly cash though i think we took over the 2000 canadian dollars each in cash and then like say 500 pounds in the bank um which is quite scary to think we had that much in cash but if you watch our vlog one of when we came to canada we opened up a bank account on the very first day we landed and we put all of our money in a canadian bank and yeah but we came over with mostly cash who do you contact if you're stuck with your application is there a help center so unfortunately there's not a help center or anything like that you can email in there's an email on the canada website but they don't really help as much the biggest help i found is on the facebook page the iec discussion and support page 
they're not like qualified people through like the visa place but they know the answer to everything so i recommend you following them i will link them down below i talk about them in every information video i talk about because they help me out a lot how does the job application process differ in Canada than the UK? Okay, so obviously you've got to change your CV over to a resume. Now, I thought they were two exactly the same things, but they're really not. We went to a YMCA. I'm sure there's YMCAs everywhere. Um, we have like two in our area. And it's basically somewhere free to go that gives you advice and help for jobs. So they have like a job posting board and I took my CV in and I had this lovely gentleman who was so helpful and he, I printed out my CV and he just wrote all over it of what I should change to make it a resume. And I would say the application, the interview process is basically exactly the same. But yeah, just the number one tip of before you get out here or when you get out here is change your CV over to a resume. It's just little words as well that you might need to change. For example, on my CV, I put that um, I did the weekly rota for all of my staff at my old job. But they don't use the road they don't use the word rotor they don't know what it means it's the word schedule so they just change little things like that which obviously is a lot better on your resume how likely it is to get pr after the iuc visa now this is down to your points so when you're applying for pr it's done on a point system if you have a certain amount of points that they're looking for that week then you get accepted obviously if you're doing an iuc visa it's already given you some points because you're living in the country already and the number one tip is try to find a manager or supervisor job role because that will give you more points so now me and jake have been a manager in canada which will be a year when we apply for our pr our points will go up so much so i guess in a way it does help you because you're able to get more points but in a way as well it can also not give you more points if you don't follow the right procedure what would you do differently if you were doing it all over again there's a number of things i would do different number one is save more i would 100 percent come over with double the amount of money second thing is i would have stayed in my airbnb for the whole month and looked at houses not apartments overall including flights visas basic furniture and things how much did it roughly cost so i did actually a video i think like last month which i'll link here and down below of how much it costs for my whole visa from flights everything and we worked it out to be five thousand pounds yeah five thousand pounds that was for a deposit on the apartment the car like everything say five thousand pounds but that would be the bare minimum for you to come over like we came over with five thousand pounds and i'm saying i wish we had more money i was able to do everything but five thousand pounds you can do it on love your videos any plans to go to bc yes we want to go to bc it's so bad Jake's best friend lives over in BC. He's a radio presenter over there. It's just at the minute we can't travel because we're in current lockdown and we are trying to save for our PR, but we do see ourselves going to BC in 2021 if the world goes back to normal. So watch this space. And I'm just gonna end it with one last question. What would you have done differently to increase your chance of getting PR? I wish we took our English test in the UK. So now that we're here, we have to take an English reading, writing and speaking test. And I wish we'd done that in the UK because this is something I'm really stressing about. I'm not very good with exams and stuff because I'm really, really bad dyslexia. So I struggle to read, write and speak. You guys wouldn't believe the speaking part because I spend my day speaking to a camera. But the amount of times I have to edit things out because I just don't make sense. But I'm really, really nervous about that. And I kind of wish I got that done in the UK. So that was a stress that I didn't have to worry about here. But apart from that, we're on the right road to get NPR. Our fingers crossed for the next six months. What I would do is I would do an update at one year and six months. And then I'll do an update at two years as well. And maybe I would have got my PR or maybe on my flight home. Who knows? But I just want to spend this time to say thank you so, so much for all the support. This channel wouldn't have been up with all these videos if it wasn't for you guys. You guys honestly inspire me to make more and more videos. I get questions all the time in my inbox about questions about the visa process. And that's what inspires me to make my videos. So I just want to say thank you so, so much. Um, if you're new here, I'd love you to hit subscribe. I've got lots of videos on my channel about moving from the UK to Canada. And if you like this video, then hit the thumbs up. 
and I will see you soon. Bye.